How many years of past papers should I solve? My teacher is making us do past papers of 1990s. I have solved 10 years of past papers. What now? My teacher says you shouldn't do past papers and just focus on concepts. Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So as you saw, there are a lot of questions related to past papers that you guys have. So in this video, I will try and answer all of those questions. But before we get into that, there is a small announcement that I'd like to make. And that is my team and I have been working on compiling detailed past paper solutions of O-level math and IGCSC math. And you can buy them at a very minimal price. So if you're interested, remember it's for O-level math and IGCSC math from 2018 to 2023 all papers and all variants so if you're interested in buying that at a very minimal price you'll find a link to it in the description now let's get into the questions and I will also be sharing with you guys some strategy and some tips and tricks that you need to follow when solving past papers I have my notes right over here just so that I don't miss anything so the first thing you need to focus on is completing the paper now this is something you'll find me emphasizing on over and over again that is do not worry about the marks do not worry worry about the time just complete the paper whatever you have to do in fact if you have to refer to your notes go ahead if you have to I don't know maybe watch a video here and there then go ahead and there is something that I will encourage you to do and that is a sneak peek now let me explain what that means so basically if let's say you've decided that you're solving a past paper of May June 2018 so what I'd like you to do is open the past paper and just have a look at the topics that are tested in that paper okay and then practice those topics revise all the concepts revise all the notes go through the notes whatever it is, maybe class recordings, whatever, just go over all of that and then attempt the past paper. So this way you will be slightly more prepared. Now, I know this is not something you can do in the actual exam, but remember, that's not what our main focus is right now. Our main focus is just sort of find a rhythm and, you know, get into the practice of solving past paper questions. So don't worry about the time. Do, however, time yourself in the sense that how long you take, because that's important for you so that you can keep track and you can see the time coming down. So for example, if let's say, initially it takes you four hours to complete a paper two which is usually two hours and 30 minutes that's fine nothing to worry about okay but do keep track of time and another important thing that is complete the paper in one sitting what do i mean so if you've started a past paper then don't just solve a couple of questions take a break you know eat watch netflix and all that don't do that just complete it in one sitting just so that you can see exactly how long you take but remember don't focus don't worry about the time too much even if it's four hours five hours just let let that be that's not what your main objective is your main objective is that through past papers you can revise all the concepts and like i said initially you can find your rhythm tip number two that is replicate the exam environment so don't listen to music while solving past papers and don't do it on a separate notebook don't have you have the paper open in front of you on a laptop or your ipad or your phone that's even worse have the paper printed out and solve it on the question paper because number one you need to get used to the exam environment and number two you need to be able to solve the paper in the space that's provided because if you're solving it on a notebook separately then chances are that you might I mean you'll have the freedom of taking as much space as you like so again you're not exactly getting used to how you will be doing it in the actual exam so print the paper and do it on the question paper itself then sit on a proper desk or if you have like a study corner and then solve it again the idea here is a lot of times you'll hear from students that you know I freaked out in the exam or I just panicked in the exam now this this is not like a 100% solution for that, but trying to replicate the exam environment, trying to sort of create that pressure that you will be going through while solving the actual exam is a way to try and overcome that. Okay, so just put yourself in that state where you can kind of imagine you being in the examination hall and then solve the past paper. So yeah, this is important so that you can learn how to perform well under pressure. Then number three, and that is use threshold. Now threshold is something that you've heard me talk about over and over again a lot of times it's become a matter of debate that you know why is the threshold so high why is the threshold so low if you've given even just one exam one o level or igcse or any cia exam for that matter you would know exactly what threshold is i've made a video about it i'll share a link to it check it out and what do i mean by use the threshold use the threshold to calculate the grade that you're getting after you know the threshold is applied basically so i made a video about it in detail talking about what it is and how you can use it i even shared an excel sheet which you can use all you have 
have to do is just enter your marks and the sheet will calculate your grade for you after the threshold is applied. This is important so that, you know, you stay motivated because what happens is if let's say you solve a really difficult exam, then obviously the chances are, in fact, it's very likely that in order to get an A in that particular paper, you need to score a lot less compared to an easy paper. So again, all of this that I'm talking about, I've covered it in a detailed video. I'll share a link to it. So do check it out and do use the threshold so that you stay motivated. How many years of past paper should you solve? So again, there's no magic number. There are a couple of things to keep in mind. I will talk about that in a minute, but just keep on solving till you feel confident, till you feel like, yes, you've understood the paper pattern. Yes, you've understood the kind of questions that you will be tested on, the kind of concepts that you will be tested on. And just keep your eyes and ears open. Why? Because you'll notice that the examiner sort of likes to test a few things in a certain topic. Okay. So don't just look at a question and just brainlessly start solving it. Like I said, keep your eyes and ears open, focus on the concept that's being tested rather than, you know, just writing down the formula and start solving it. Because the more you try and understand the nature of the question, the pattern of the paper, the better you will be able to tackle the more difficult questions. And a couple of things to keep in mind when you're planning your past paper solving routine or whatever it is, that is to keep the syllabus changes. Now, if you're an O-level math student, then remember in 2018, the syllabus was changed slightly. So whatever past papers you're solving, just make sure if you're going in a chronological order, then I would suggest start from 2018. Or if let's say you're starting from recent years, which is something I always suggest, then start from 2023 and then do till 2018 and then go back and do all the other variants. Again, variants is something I've talked about in a different video. I'll share a link to it. Check it out. But this is for O-level math. For IGCSE math, there was a major change in your syllabus in 2020. So again, start from 2023, then do it till 2020 and then go back and do the variants. Then 2020 for ad maths as well. Doesn't matter whether it's O-level or IGCSE and 2020 for A-level math as well. Okay. So remember, first focus on the years after the syllabus was changed. And then of course, you can solve papers before that. There's no limit to it. But obviously don't get a teacher to help you out. Don't end up redempting questions of topics that are not in your syllabus anymore. Lastly, just give it some time. Okay. Now, one or two bad papers is not the end of the world. In fact, when you're starting out, chances are you will do horrible in a couple of papers, two, three, four, perhaps even more than that. It's not the end of the world. It takes a decent amount of time to find that rhythm, to find that momentum. So just be consistent and make sure that you keep track of your error so that you're conscious. So if let's say you have a habit of making a sign error, then just make a list of it. In fact, that's something that I always suggest my students make a list of all your errors and keep it in front of you so that you're looking at it every day and you know exactly the potential errors that you could make. So that will help you to be more aware, be more conscious. And next time when you're solving a question which has a possibility of you making that error, you know, be more vigilant. That's the whole idea. There's nothing fancy going on here. It's just so that you're more conscious and you're more aware and you know exactly all the errors that you've made in the past so that you don't end up repeating them. Lastly, I would say that don't waste your time trying to look for shortcuts. I have a lot of students, dozens, in fact, hundreds of students who reach out to me and ask me about the perfect strategy that what strategy should I follow or how many hours should I give to math or like what is the best way of getting an A star. Now, my answer to all those students is very simple and that is there is no best strategy. The best strategy is just be consistent. That's it. Go old fashioned ways, start putting in the hours. You'll realize what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Just be productive and make sure that you have a good routine, sleep well, have a healthy diet, all that stuff that goes without saying. But other than that, there is no specific strategy. Just keep putting in the hours, be consistent. If you don't have the tendency of putting in long hours every day, that's fine. Just put like an hour or two every day, but just be consistent. Don't let there be a long gap because the thing about math is that you will not just math with other subjects as well, that you will forget everything. Okay. And then, you know, the time to sort of go back and then do your revision first and then trying to again, find that momentum, find that rhythm. Doing that will cost you a lot of time. So just make sure that you stay consistent and yeah, that's it. Just keep solving past papers, keep practicing. So if you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to share this video with your friends, classmates, and whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.